linkage and stuff. Patients genetic. Okay. So here, pedigree analysis, right? And I think we did some example also in this case, right? So we already have, do you remember this example, Parker? Yes. You know? Yeah. Okay, yes. so okay, so basically what this example tells you, it's about let's take this and then I'll I'll take one more question. Uh in that meanwhile I'll find some questions and we'll do that also. So Iram, do you have any issues with analyzing pedigree charts? Yes, sir. Uh, okay, you also find it difficult. Okay, cool. So um uh, Let's start with this concept first. This we did in class, but just to uh, brush your memories, uh, let's just assume that the gene, the alleles for freckles, the gene that gives freckles, freckles are these, these marks that we see in certain ethnicities people have in certain <clears throat> region, these, these marks on the skin, right? These are freckles. Uh, they're also known as their beauty component to the face. So let's say, uh, and this, this is inheritable trait. So capital F is the dominant allele and small f is the recessive allele. And this pedigree shows the inheritance of freckles in a family. So black is where the freckles are narrated, just like any other. So, so first, before we begin, I'm just assuming that you all know of, both of you are aware of all these uh, symbols that we use. Is it right? Yes, sir. Square is male, circle is female. If it is a, a diamond, it's, it's where the sex is unspecified, like the person who's making the chart is not aware what is the biological sex of that person. And if they are all colored, so basically according to the uh, international methods, the standard methods, it has to be red colored, but since your question papers and most of the books are not color printed, so instead this is black colored. So when we see a colored box, whether it is square, circle, or diamond, these are affected individuals, affected male, affected female, and affected individual whose sex is not specified. Uh, we don't know. A single line tells a mating pair between a male and a female, and a double line tells that this biological mating is happening between close relatives, which is consanguineous marriage, okay, or consanguineous mating, which means uh, both of them share the common ancestry or the gene pool, immediate ancestry and immediate gene pool. Okay, so let's come back to this part here. Okay, so first is the parental generation, then F1 and F2. Okay, and what do you see here? So let's try to understand both Iram and Parker, just pay attention. So this tells in the parent, this is the male, right? Yes. And let me use another color because it's black. So let's use green. So this is the male and this is the female. And we can say that the female had freckles, right? Mm -hmm. In the parent generation, the mother had freckles. And when we went to the F1 generation, how many kids this couple had? Can, can you Four. tell me? You know? Yeah. One, two, two three. three, and just three. Yeah, no four. So how you find it? So the line connecting this line, this line are the kids, the biological kids, right? One, two, and three though, just to confuse you, they have labeled a lot of other numbers. What does what are these people then? This, this, and this. Partners. Partners. Yeah. To whom they got married and their biological, like uh, their partners. So they are three kids, and we start from right always. Uh, sorry. Uh, like right side of the pedigree but basically the left our left you understand this side and this is the first kid 
the second and the third. So first one was a female, the eldest, then um, male, and then another youngest female. So two sisters and one brother. And we can see that the freckles were present in the brother, like two younger kids, the boy and the girl had freckles. So right away, if we assume, so we know about what are the possible ways of inheritance, right? It could be dominant, uh, sex-linked dominant or sex-linked recessive and autosomal dominant and autosomal recessive. Correct? Parker and Niram? Yes, sir. And since now we are going to build some concepts uh, which which will help you quickly solve problems, I'll, I'll be giving you shorthand notes to solve the pedigree. First thing that you should look in a pedigree is if it is sex linked, then it clearly in your, like for your syllabus, your book or your syllabus or NCRT does not talk about any Y linked disorder because it's very simple in case of Y linked disorders. Y linked means only boys have Y chromosome, right? XY. So it will only pass on from father to the next son. So it's easy to track. Okay, nothing very convoluted in that. So in your case, whenever they are saying sex linked, unless they specify in some case that it is Y chromosome linked, because Y, y linked is also sex linked and X linked is also sex linked. But in your case, it's always X linked. So if you think, first check for whether it shows a pattern of X linkage or not. So if it was X linked, let's say, dominant or recessive will figure out later, then from mother, it could go to daughter and son alike, right? From mother, it can go to both because mother gives X to both. Do you understand? Yes, sir. So first shorthand note, if it is X linked from mother in the next generation, it can go to daughter and it can also go to the son. If it is dominant, it can just go to daughter with just one copy because you, you just need one copy to express a dominant trait, but you need two recessive copies to express a recessive trait. All that is clear, Mendelian genetics, Hiram Parker. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Yes. So first step, let's see. Mother is affected. Mother, mother shows freckles. In the next generation, one son and one daughter shows freckles. So far, so good. In the next generation, this father had freckles. Okay. And if it was X-linked, then? The daughter will also get freckles. It will only go to daughter from the father. Okay. Because to son, it will give a Y chromosome. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Oh, can you yes. explain that again? So let's let's write the genotypes here. We're looking for X if it is X linked. And we are uh, We'll talk about dominant or recessive later. So if it is X linked, mother has two X, right? Right. And father has just one X. Mother gives X to everyone, to son also and to the daughters also. Father give X only to their daughters and not to the son. Okay? Yes. So one thing that you see here is this thing is present in all generations. It's present in the parent generation. This is also showing in the F1 generation. And this is also showing in the F2 generation. So this trait does not skips generation. If it is not skipping generation, what it is more most likely to be? Recessive trait or a dominant trait? A dominant Remember, Yes. Remember Mendel's experiment? A recessive trait tends to skip yes. generation. Yeah? Everyone? 
Yes, sir. Yeah. So here we see that no skipping of generation is taking place. So it's more likely to be dominant, but let's just first stick to sex linked or autosomal. So let's assume if it is sex linked from the mother, it can go to both the son and the daughter, which we see happening in the next generation. A son is affected and a daughter is also affected because the mother was affected. Correct? Right. From the mother, so this pair had just two sons. Only one son is affected, but mother would have given to both, both right? This mother would have given X here also and so. Correct? Yes, sir. Which means one of the X of mother was normal. I'm writing N here in this case. Is it clear? Otherwise, if both the X were affected, there was no chance that one son was normal and other son was affected. So this son got the affected copy and this son got the normal copy. That's why he is normal. Because from father, he got a Y here also. So this tells you very quickly, if you just follow this thing, that it is our dominant trait, which can just pass on with one X. Make sense? Yes. Sir. Looking at this family here. Yeah, quickly. So always, first thing, check for, is it skipping generation or not? If it is skipping generation, and when I say skipping generation, remember, look for their biological offsprings. If this person was, let's say, uh, if this person was affected and no other was, and not these two, then when you look, it looks like, oh, it is present in all the generations, but that's not true here, right? Because biologically, this person is not their kid. He's an in-law, right? Son-in-law. Do you understand? Yes, sir. So the genes of these two, of uh, uh, the parents, can only be assessed or checked in their offsprings, not to whom the offsprings got married. So here we see that it is a dominant and it fulfills the criteria of being sex-linked because here, Again, it's a father. And if this person is affected, it should be like the genotype should be like this person, which is the X is affected and the Y is normal. And similarly, this got the X from the father, but then how is this person affected? Does this fit in? This is the father, this is the son. The mother is a carrier. Mother is a carrier, you are saying. If mother is a carrier, which means mother's genome is this, right? But with the same genome, we hypothesize this person to be affected, this mother to be affected. That's how this makes sense for a sex link. Do you understand? Yes, sir. So how can this person be affected? Can you think of something? Some reason? The it is oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Can you think of this four? This is a mystery. So, so it's not dominant. If it was dominant, one copy would have been enough, no? And by going yeah. going by the rule of dominancy, this person, where did this this fourth? person in the second generation got that dominant copy from it's a boy and if this disease is sex linked then 
it doesn't not make sense. Linked. Yeah. Then it's not. X linked. Yes. So then what it is? It what is, is dominant it? for sure because it's in all generation, right? If it was recessive, it would have skipped generation. And there are Autosomal. three generations. Yes, Iram, go ahead. So what is what could be the other possible? Autosomal. Autosomal. Autosomal dominant. dominant. Make sense? So first rule, yes. look if it is skipping generations. If no, sure shot dominant. If yes, more likely to be recessive. Okay. Then look for if sex linkage, the pattern of sex linkage is being followed. Okay. And it's easy because you just have to look at X chromosome. So start with this. And if, if it is a mother, X can go both to a father, a son and a daughter. Okay, it looks like it is happening. But again, if this is a father, X will only go to the daughter. So this makes sense, but this does not. So this just this one kid here will tell you that it is not sex linked. You understand? Yes, sir. Are we up for let's let's do some let me yeah. Let me paste a question here from one of the question papers and let me allow you people to solve it. Give me one second. Let me find out one question. Also, uh, some of the pedigrees that are already there in your NCRT, uh, if sometimes they just take it from the book and give it to you, removing all the information. But if you remember uh, which disease is what, like sometimes some examples that are there in your textbook, if you remember those examples where they fit in, the moment you will read the name of the disease, you will know the answer. That will save the time even further. This is just from the point of view of doing fast in exams. Uh, one second. Trying to find a question based on pedigree. Also, did you both check the weightage of different units in boards? Are you aware of it? Aisha, Iram, Parker? Yes, sir. Yeah. So you must have noted, Iram, uh, how much is the weightage for ecosystem unit? It's fairly straightforward and easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's around eight. I'm to... not so sure. No, yeah, so biotech is twelve. Yeah, biotech is twelve, but I think ecosystem is somewhere around fourteen to sixteen percent. So both chapters, biotech. Yes. No, no, no. Uh, ecosystem. Sorry. Bi biotechnology, including both the chapters, the whole unit is around twelve, ten to twelve percent. Yeah, but ecosystem being a easy unit, I think that is one thing you can keep in your keep in your uh, revision list that you should not leave that portion, thinking that it's too much to remember. It's also easy. So I am not finding any. Sir, how much is genetics? Genetics is 16 to 18 percent. Genetics and evolution. 20 marks. 20. 20 percent. Okay. Marks, marks. 20 marks out of 70 you are saying. Then it's even more yes, than sir. 20 percent. Okay. Then it's even more than 20 percent. Including, uh, assuming including evolution, right? You know? Yes. Because sir. genetics and evolution is the same unit. So if it's 20 marks in 70, it's more than 20%. Yeah, so genetics, ecosystem, these, okay. Um, so let me give you an example of a question that has come on this one question. Here, the trick is if you know, like I was saying, sometimes I just take it directly from NCRT. So let me insert it. 
Um, can you all see this? I'll make it big. Don't worry. Can you read it, everyone? Clearly? Everyone can read it? Parker, Aisha, Niram? Yes, sir. Yeah. So what do you think about this? So hemophilia is a uh, sex link recessive, right? Yeah. So you know it from your NCRT. Exactly. Yes, sir. Right? So if you don't know, then what you will do is you will spend a lot of time, you know, figuring out what it is. So that's what I'm, I was trying to tell you. If you know um, certain uh, answers to certain examples that are already in your textbook, then it becomes easier. Make sense? So all you have to do is know about hemophilia. So the question says, this is the pedigree of a family tracing the movement of a gene for hemophilia. Explain the pattern of inheritance of the disease in the family. So what do you have to write? This is this is from boards. So what are you going to write about? You're going to write about hemophilia. And you know that hemophilia is? What is it? Is it X-linked or not? Yes, it is sex-linked and it is recessive. So you can clearly see here. Can you explain? Can you see here? If it's sex-linked and recessive, it means two copies have to be present. But who's the, let's say this is parent generation. Let me use another color. I'm, I'm explaining you a concept here. But they have not shown female. So male is affected, which means for any, you also know for any sex-linked, disorder males are always sorry males are never carrier i told you this right yes sir why males are never carrier because males have just one x chromosome so even if it is dom if it is dominant then you just need one copy and the disease will show up if it is recessive, you need two copies, but since male only have one copy here, this will be, so this, um, put this hyphen I'm putting um, for, for abnormality, it's abnormal. So with this genotype X abnormal Y, this male is showing the disorder. Okay. And then we see so where did that X must have gone from this father? This is the father and this is the mother. Father can give X only to daughters. And they have two daughters, right? Daughter one and daughter two. So in both the daughters, one X must be abnormal, but the other X will be normal, which is from the mother, right? And that's why neither this daughter nor this daughter is showing any hemophilia, but they are carriers. Do you agree and do you understand? Yes, sir. yes, sir. Iram, oh, Aisha is also joined in. Good evening, Aisha. How are you? Aisha, you can you can you speak up or no? If no, you can write in the chat. Okay. But let's come back to this. And since both these daughters, one and two, are carriers, that's why we see when this couple had a, had a son, he unfortunately got the abnormal copy from the mother and a Y from the father. And he is just like his grandfather. Right? Yes, sir. And you will also note one more thing. How can we say that this is a recessive? So it, it follows the pattern of sex linkage. So it is sex linked. But the fact that it is skipping one generation, generation two, this is parent, this is F1, and this is F2. 
So it's not present here, right? And then again, showing up just like, so you can just more likely to be recessive. But remember, there is a trick here. Can anyone tell me what is the catch here? You cannot for sure say this, this is recessive just by looking at this generation. Both were daughters. So to be more sure, you need, a, you need both sexes representation in every generation. But it's true. In this case, it happens to be sex linked and recessive because we already know now they can give you the same question without this term. If they remove sir, the same, yes. Sir, how are both the daughters carriers when only the father was um, affected? Because to become a female, whether you are this daughter or this daughter, to become a daughter of this couple, how many X chromosomes you need? Two. Two. And one X chromosome will come from mother, but the other X chromosome will always come from? Father. Father. And father only had one X chromosome. And that X chromosome was, was defected. You understand? Yes, sir. So father will always give a defected X to any daughter of his and every daughter of his. So every daughter of this couple where the father is suffering from a sex-linked recessive disorder will contain one this defective X. Yes or no? Yes, sir. That's where both the daughters will be carriers. So in this case, in the second family where this carrier daughter married a normal uh, man, oh. just like this one. Yeah, just let me finish this one thing, Iram. So in this case where this carrier uh, daughter married another person, male, who is normal, they got another daughter. And can you can you tell me if this daughter is, what, what should be the genotype of this daughter here? If you understand this, then you understood much of pedigree. X-dash, yes. X-dash, X-normal. X-dash, X-normal. Okay. And why do you think so? Because one X is coming from the mother who is a carrier and the other X, which is from the father and the father is a normal male. So, so okay, it so could also which... be normal, uh -huh. normal, right? Exactly. So this is where I was coming to. So in this case, we know that the father is normal. So clearly the normal X is coming from father all the time. Yes or no, Parker? Yes. And mother has two X. One is normal, one is defective. So it could, mother can also also give a normal X, right? So either it could be X normal, X normal or X defected X normal. So both the genotypes are possible for this particular daughter, this particular female in F2. So either this female could be carrier or this female could be normal. How will you get to know? You will only get to know when you will extend this pedigree to F3 where she gets married to a normal person and she has both sons or daughters and we realize what happens. At this level, you can't say. She could either be carrier or normal. So if something like this comes up and they ask you this uh, P, the daughter P here, if she, she is carrier, she is normal. She can either be carrier or normal or the information is not enough to predict anything. These are the four options. So you will choose she can either be carrier or normal. Do you understand the concept? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Yes, you know. go ahead, sir. Uh, yeah, so uh, in the F1 generation, if the, if the partner, they had no, no, the parent generation, they had like two mm -hmm. kids, right? Uh, female mm -hmm. and female. So let's say if mm -hmm. one is a male, then you see the the chromosome uh, passing through all the generation. Then how can that be recessive in that case? Uh, sorry, I, let's, yeah. let, let uh, me so try this... to understand. You are saying that, let's let's build it this ourselves. So you're saying that this, in this case, this is the normal case, right? Yes, Which sir. is above. 
but now instead of they having two daughters if they had they one, one daughter, daughter and, and one son yeah. yes and then yes the son is affected right the son you're saying the son is affected yeah because one chromosome is from the wait, wait, wait. In, see in this case if the son is affected then father only had father was affected because of x father do not give x to son father can only give x to daughter mm -hmm. so the daughter will yes. be x x normal and it, it is interesting case because if this son is affected then the mother was a carrier carrier yeah for sure then you only this son if the daughter was normal if the daughter was normal normal yeah so normal and carrier are always shown like this you will never know if it's normal or they will always be shown with but if they explicitly tell you that the daughter is normal it becomes even more interesting but, but these kind of questions case, so in like in this case you don't have a uh, daughter as normal right because the son is affected if the mother is uh, uh, no sir carrier, in the above case in the above case here yeah sir the the daughter uh -huh. the daughter is a no. carrier right because the exactly yeah both are carriers so like i mean to say the um, you can see the chromosome passing through all the generations so it can't be recessive right uh see the chromosome will pass but a recessive chromosome or a recessive allele will only show up when it is in a homozygous condition so recessive is not when the chromosome does not pass it chromosome cannot just vanish all of a sudden no even in case of mendel's experiment when the, he was crossing a pure line tall with a pure line short in the f1 generation all were hybrid right so there was a chromosome containing the recessive allele it's not like it got away it can't vanish it was there but all the plants were tall you understand but if you see the phenotype there was a short plant in f1 uh, in parent then there was no short plant in f1 and again if you cross self cross f1 you will see a short plant in f2 so the phenotype missed one skipped one generation it was present in parent the expression was there in parent then it got it skipped but the chromosome was there the small t was there but it was unable to show itself similarly here also the defected copy of x is there but it's unable to show itself in a female because female needs both the copies defected to express a recessive trait make sense okay. yes sir yeah but the the Does case it... that we just made it right now here the mm -hmm. um, the disease is uh, trying to show in all the you know in parent f1 and also in f2 if we make f2 oh so you are saying that if if we make this kind of a pedigree um and if this so the parent had one of the parent had the disease and the mother was a carrier and then another the, the son also got the disease and if i just mm -hmm. marry the son with a female yeah and let's say they they had one son and one daughter okay and you you are trying to say that it is showing up in every generation right yeah it shows up in every generation is... correct so it can't be recessive right uh, no it it will be recessive here so skipping a generation is the first pass even like i said if it skips a generation it is more likely to be recessive but it it's not a sure shot thing to say that it's skipping a generation so it is Uh, sorry it's not skipping a generation so it is for sure not recessive here two generations it showed to show in the third generation also you need the female again to be a carrier then only it can show up either in this male or like this or in this female right otherwise it will not show up so in every generation you need to have a carrier mated to a diseased a carrier mated to a disease 
So if a carrier is mating to a disease in every generation, it will still be recessive and will not skip generation. But that normally does not happen because these are anyway rare things and someone to be carrier and the father to be affected, it's rare because of two reasons. Hemophilic patients, if they are affected with a disease, they often do not live very long. You understand? Yes, sir. So it's, 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 it's rare, but you're right. Here it's showing up in every generation, but it's still recessive. It will be recessive because to show the disease, it needs two copies in a female. And in male, it just need one copy because males are never carrier for sex link disorder. Does that answer your question, Par uh, Iram? Then I'll go to Parker. Yes, sir. Yes, Parker. Go ahead. Sir, uh, in the case which uh, we made just right now, mm -hmm. sir, uh, wouldn't uh, after the uh, in the F1 generation, mm -hmm. wouldn't the daughter be affected too because the mother's a carrier and the father is affected? Yes, right. You're right. So here, there are two possibilities. The daughter can get both the affected copies and she can either be, but if they are making it like this, then she's a carrier. You're right. See, you will always get to know between affected and non-affected. That the pedigree has to tell you. That is the compulsion of a pedigree. What stays behind the curtains is whether it is a carrier or a norm. So that's where all the enigma lies. And that's where you have to trace the genotype to tell that this white uncolored circle, whether it is a normal person or a carrier person. Because carriers do not show any phenotype. And coloring the boxes is only because uh, it, it represents phenotype. Do you understand, Parker? So you're right. Yes. In the above case, both is possible. I just made it like that to explain the fact that even without skipping the generation, a recessive disease can prevail. But given that in every generation, the mating couple, one has to be carrier, another has to be affected. Yep. Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. Um, because that was even evident from Mendel's experiment. Because in Mendel's experiment, when he took a pure tall, capital T, capital T, and a pure short, small t, small t, for the dwarf character, only one parent was responsible. The other was pure tall. But tell me, you do it now and tell me, what will happen if I will cross this couple, this pea plant. So this is the parent generation. Tell me what will happen in a F1. And whoever is done will just raise the hand. I want all of you to finish first. Just raise your hand if you are done. Aisha, Iram and Parker. F1 and then uh, self cross to Okay, just do till effort first. Okay, so let's go to Parker. Parker? What what did you do and what's your explanation? Sir, it's 50-50%. 50 50 what? Tall and dwarf. Okay. So can you tell the genotype also? That will be helpful. What will be the genotype? You're, you're doing right. So you you all understood. That's correct. That's a good thing. So we know it will be capital T, small t on one side and small t and small t on the other, right? So first one will yes, be capital sir. T, small t, capital T, small t, small t, small t, and small t, small t. So two will be tall, hybrid tall, but we are writing it tall, and two will be dwarf. dwarf. So did you see that one tall and one dwarf we crossed in the F1 generation, we got 
half tall half dwarf so this dwarf character shows up immediately it does not skip a generation whereas if we do the same thing like this capital t capital t cross to small t small t what will happen in f1 this is also one tall and one dwarf isn't it yes sir phenotypically tall dwarf here also phenotypically tall dwarf but what will happen in this case all will turn out tall because yes. tall is tall all will be capital t small t and all will turn out to be tall here so where is where why there is no dwarf character here but we see a dwarf character here yes aisha ask you you raised your hand do you have a question or is it or you didn't turn it down okay yes parker why do i see dwarf character coming in this case right in the next generation but in this case case 2 it is skipping a generation why the re the reason could not be in the phenotype phenotype phenotypically both are same tall cross bred dwarf tall cross bred dwarf the reason is in the genotype yeah parker can you explain So is it because so, um because the in all the genotypes there's a dominant tall in all the in case one or two what are you talking about two okay so yes you are right let me put it in some better words so what parker is trying to say is that in case 2 the dwarf character or the recessive character is only coming from one parent only one parent is contributing to recessive character whereas in case 1 both the parents have contributions in the recessive character yes or no the tall parent is not pure line tall in other words we can call it a carrier for the dwarf character like this situation here right do you understand hiram that why in tall, right yes heterozygous tall in this this condition is also heterozygous that we were talking and this condition is also heterozygous right yeah so basically like for a dwarf condition to express in the generation we should have the hybrid partners to be heterozygous dominant yeah if you want it to be expressed in the immediate next generation and you know this type of cross is called a test cross remember that remember studying test yes. cross so if you if you want to know the genotype of a person or of a plant or of any organism who is showing dominant character but we know that showing dominant character can only happen just by one allele if you have one allele you will show that character dominant character what we will not know is that whether that person was heterozygous for that dominant allele or homozygous to to know that you do a test cross when you do a test cross test cross is crossing it with a homozygous recessive plant parent it is also a type of back cross because we are crossing it back to a parent so when you do that if you get equal progeny tall and dwarf you know that the tall parent was heterozygous but if we get all tall we know that the tall parent was pure Sim similar concept apply here if one parent which is female here would have been normal xn and xn and other would have been affected then we would see skipping a generation event right the recessive trait will not be expressed all will be normal or carrier we don't know about carriers here right so but because one was carrier 
So this X dash X N is like capital T small t. It's a heterozygous condition, correct? Everyone agrees? Yes, sir. So when, and, and, and this anyways is a recessive condition because for males, only one tempered X and it is a, it, they show recessive disorder. So take this as small t, small t, and this as capital T, small t. And in the next generation, we see the dwarf character coming up. So we see the disease coming up, showing up. Though showing up of the dwarf character or showing up of the disease is a recessive phenomena, but we can achieve that without skipping generation when both parents contribute to the recessive disease. X dash, X dash, small t here and small t here. Right? Do you see contribution coming from both parents? The red, what I have marked in red are the contributions. So it is exactly following Mendelian genetics. Is it clear, everyone? Yes or no? Is it clear? Any doubts? Yes, sir. Yeah. Aisha, is it clear to you? Since you're not speaking anything, write something in the chat to just give some assurance. Okay, perfect. That is also another way. Okay, cool. So sh should I give you more questions to solve for yourself? Let's, let, let's do one more. And this time you will do it. And yes, sir. Yeah. Let me find out one more question. Pedigree mm -hmm. mm -hmm. question. Yes, so this is one question. It's from an All India CBSC question paper. Yes. Let me insert it here. Oh. Yes. So will uh, chromosomal disorder express in every generation? No, they're not. Mend so chromosomal disorders are non-Mendelian disorders, right? Yes. Sir. Yeah. So we'll talk about it in some time. Can you, can you all read the question? Or should I make it a little smaller to fit in? Can you all read? Give, give me a thumbs up if you all can read. Question 170. Okay, do this. Solve it on your own. Whoever is done will raise the hand.
Okay, so so currently focus on being correct. Uh, being fast is also a very important thing that we will be practicing this whole month of January. But to begin with, focus more on being correct this week, at least in today's class. Okay, so take a couple of more minutes. But I want to see all the hands raised when they are confident and they are, that they are correct. Okay, one last minute, finish. Okay, am I am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Who is not done? Let's let's Parker, are you done? I can see Aisha and Adam's hand for sure. Parker, what's up? Yes, sir. Done. Okay. So let's start. I think this was not that difficult. As recessive or dominant, because they have already they are already telling you. So study the ped, given pedigree chart showing the pattern of blood group inheritance. Now before we go forward, I would like you to tell something. Uh, always it's a good practice. So when you get questions, because I think uh, in boards do you get a rough sheet? It was back then in my time we we could take a rough sheet. Can you take a rough sheet or can yes, you scribble please. on the question paper? What? How, how does it go? Uh, question paper, scribbling not. Is not allowed. Is it allowed or not allowed? Sorry, Iram, I missed your last word. No, sir, it's not allowed. Not allowed. You so make, you can uh, get a rough sheet. Rough sheet. Okay. So that also works. So what you do, whenever you are solving any question, and you read the question, okay, 
and in a rough sheet it will be great to just scribble quickly like within 10 20 seconds some important information that you shouldn't miss about that concept for example blood group what do we know about blood group that in blood group there is codominance right and where in the ab group make sense an o group yes, means simply no antigen correct yes no antigen on the surface or a null antigen on the surface so you will just scribble that because this will always prevent us from making silly mistakes we often do that in exam so this helps scribbling some important things suppose the question was about um law of dominance so quickly you can just write exceptions incomplete dominance and codominance uh, and just in front of that codominance as blood group incomplete dominance is is the um, the, the the flower color right in the snapdragon antenna anyways so let's look so and the second thing to before solving any pedigree is explicitly mark generations parent f1 and f2 cool now the question says give the genotype of the following first parents which means this and this person's genotype so this is a male and a female and you know that blood grouping is what it's a autosomal trait correct and we write because when we write the genotype we just write i o or i a or something like this right this i is just to express that the chromosome or the allele whatever you say yes so tell me what is the genotype of the parents um parker and this is the blood group given let me tell you this a and b is the group given right we see it here also a o a b a for x and y it's not given so remember that this male is a this female is b but they want to ask the genotype and a simple way to do is just solve for all if it is a and b and if they have two offsprings one is ab and the other is o what is the possible case recessive it's it's recessive so here i think uh, i yes you have to call either homozygous or heterozygous the concept of a recessive dom dominance works through that way yes you know you're saying something so this parent who's having a blood group you are saying is a heterozygous a which means yes. i a and i yeah. i o yes correct yes. and this father is i b and i o and why can't this be i a i a because and this i b i b they had has a this o one. blood group this one yeah. right yes and and so what is the only way one can have a o blood group uh i i yes i o i o right yes or no everyone yes sir yes and sir. the only way this is possible when both the parents have at least one copy of o which means one recessive or one null allele copy like parker was saying and then this one got a from mother or oh, sorry a from father and b from mother mother and hence this person here that have starred marked is showing a codominance effect remember yes sir. yes aisha aisha you have a question i can see your hand raised do you have a question or was it by mistake i guess we will only know if aisha will type in the chat 
Okay, Aisha, I just forgot to put it down. Hope you are following the whole discussion, Aisha. And see uh, if you can get the microphone fixed then because the next few sessions are going to be you know, discussive. If you don't discuss, you won't, you won't build concepts with us. Right? You are only learning as much as Iram and Aisha and I are discussing. Sorry, Iram, Parker and I are discussing. You will learn more if you pitch in and you start telling us your issues and problems and where you are weak. Okay, Aisha? Okay, perfect. Good. So this is fixed. Genotype of this X individual. Now, this is interesting. Parker, what do you think? Uh, oh, Iram, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. So, I think there are two possible ways. One okay. could be um, IA, I not. Okay, one could be I A I not for this. Okay, and other would be uh, homozygous I A I A I A I A, yeah. and that's why. Why do you think that? Because the same two possibilities then will be for this offspring, right? This one. Either yes. this will be I A I O, so that it is A blood group, or mm -hmm. I A I A. So that it is a blood group. Correct, everyone? Pa Parker, you also understand the same thing? So both possibilities yes, are there sir. for X. But what will be the blood group of X for sure? A. Correct? It has to have an A blood group if the partner is having an AB blood group so that the offspring for sure gets the A blood group. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay, tell me one thing, people. So, here. Yes, Hiram. It can also have uh, I not, I not, right? Because, exactly. Yeah. It can also, yeah, I was just going to say that. It can also have I not, I know. And tell me one thing why can't X be I be I not? Can't it be I, B, I, not? Yeah, it can be. It can also be I, B, I, not. Yes? In fact, X can also be I, A, I, B. Isn't it? Think about it. Iram, what do you think? Yeah, I didn't think of this. So X, this one, can either be I, A, I not. It can also be I, A, I, A. It can be I not, I not. It can be I, A, I, B. Okay? And it can be I, B, I not. Make sense? Yes. Let's sir. see. Let's see how. So this is X, and the partner of X we already know is I A I B because it's given here. Now, and what we also know is the offspring is A blood group. Now, to become A, there are two possibilities, I, A, I, A, and I, A, I, not. Now, we know that the partner of X, let's call it R for now, the partner of X, which is R, to make the offspring A will always contribute A, because if it contributes B, the offspring is not going to be A. Either it will be AB or B. Okay, so part, this partner always gave IA. Now, from other partner, you either need IA or IO. 
if this is the condition, it can provide both IA or IO. Here it can provide IA. Here it can provide IO. Here also it can provide IA. Here it's also it can provide IO. So in all these five possibilities, their offspring, as mentioned here, can be A. Do you all understand? Iram, Aisha, and Parker. Thumbs up if you understand. So yes. a good question would be, a more difficult question would be, what could not be the genotype of X? The X can never I, be... B, I, B. Yes, IB, IB, because for their offspring, the blood group is mentioned already. The genotype is not mentioned, but the blood group is mentioned, and that prevents the X from being IB, IB. If it is IB, IB, this is biologically not possible. Make sense, everyone? So this is solved. B, state the possible blood groups of the individual Y in the third generation. Now let's come to Y. Go ahead, Parker, your turn. Parker, are you speaking something or not speaking? Yes, sir. Yeah. If you find any difficulty, just tell us. We'll discuss. No worries. Yes, sir. What do you want? Shall we discuss? Yes, sir. Okay, so Iram, time for you to pitch in. Let's discuss. State the possible blood groups of individual Y in the third generation. Now, Y's blood group depends on the parents and good thing is parents' blood group is given, O and A. So it becomes very simple. Y has two parents. One, one parent's blood group is O where it clearly means the only genotype possible is I, I, I not, I not. Yes. And, and then it's crossed e, with yeah. yeah. For E there are two possibilities. Yes. Mm. Either this IA, yeah, and IA, or I not IA, I not. So the parents are sorted, right, Parker? Yes, sir. Now, what all possible blood groups? And remember, they are asking blood group, not the genotype. So, one thing is sure that one parent is always going to give I not, which is this parent, the female mother, right. And this is the male. Yeah. So I0 is fine. Now from the other parent, either it can get another I0 or it can get IA. A. IA. So in this case, the blood group is O group. And in this case, the blood group is A. So the possible blood groups of individual Y could be either O blood group or so it could also be IA, IA. No, but that's genotype. We're not worrying about, yes, you're right. You're right. I Genotypically, I it is, but it will make no difference in the group, right? No, sorry, it can't oh, be yeah. IA, IA. It can't be. Hiram, do you understand why? This is the same parent. These are the two combinations of the same parent. Oh, yeah, sorry. One parent is O, so it can never be IA, IA. So these are the only two possibilities and only two blood groups. So remember, if in question they ask you blood group, okay, and you just write genotype and do not mention the group and leave the, your answer, you the examiner has all the rights to cut marks. You might think that, oh, I did the right thing. I have, it is the true answer. It's obvious that this is O group, but you have to write. If they ask blood group, you have to write the group. If they don't ask blood group, if they only ask the genotype, then you don't have to mention blood group. 
and you will not get your marks cut. But if you mention blood group, you will not get extra marks also. So reading the question becomes very, very important. Make sense, Iram, Nasha? Yes. Let's come to C part. How does the inheritance of this blood group explain codominance? That's why, exactly for that reason, we scribbled some things here. So what, what are you going to write in this C part? This is subjective. You know, how does this chart explain codominance? First, where does it explain codominance? I have made a star there, right? The first offspring of the F1 generation, which is a male, correct? So for codominance, it's necessary to have ABO blood group. And we see that in the second generation. So let's explain. First, F1 generation, right? So yeah, don't so write. F1 yeah. So you can write here as an answer that uh, through this pedigree chart, we do see codominance happening in F1 generation with the first offspring which is a male. It has inherited one copy of A from the father and another copy of B antigen from the mother and hence its blood group is AB. Both the antigens are co-expressing itself equally. So the blood group is both AB. So this is how this, is, uh, how this blood grouping explains codominance. And you are right. You can also write the way you were saying that to explain codominance, ABO blood grouping is necessary or important and which is happening here, right? But you have to exactly mention which individual in which generation is showing codominance. So the first offspring of the parent in the F1 generation, which is a male, also mention that. The elder, you can also use the word like elder because it is the elder one from the left. And your answer is complete. So if this kind of question comes, it will come for five marks for sure. And if you understand some basic concepts, you, it's an easy five mark, right? You agree? Yeah. Yeah. Anyone, you, do you still find any difficulty? Would you like to go for one more question? This time we'll try to be faster also. Correct and fast both. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Let me see. Okay. I got exactly the kind of question I wanted. This is again from All India paper. So let's try to be quicker and correct both, which is the final goal. It's again a pedigree based question. Yes. Can you see the question? Can you read it well? Hiram, Aisha, cool. Go ahead. Raise your hands if you are done.
डांस फॉर्म ओके आयशा व्हाट अबाउट यू Sir. Yes, go ahead, you know. Sir, she gave a thumbs up. I think it's done for her. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, yes. Uh, the thumbs up is not visible to me. Is it okay? Okay, cool. So if she is done, let's start then. Um, let's select and I really can't see Aisha's thumbs up. That's why. Sorry. Okay, so study the given pedigree chart and answer the question that follows. They have mentioned the generation for you, one, two, and three. You know, parent F one and F two. That's how I use. Like it's it's more more convenient to me, like saying calling it parents F one and F two. But if they have written one, two, and three, and if they ask with respect to that, then answer with respect to that. So here, generation one basically means the parent, right? Don't get confused. Okay, is the trait recessive or dominant? What do you think, Hiram? Is it recessive or dominant? Here it's very, very uh, crystal clear. Hiram, what what is your answer? Tell us. Sir, I think it is dominant. Dominant. Why do you think so? See, Iram, if the parents do not show the phenotype and somehow the offspring show it, it's a sure, short, clear sign that it's not dominant, it's recessive. You know why? Because think of it, where did this thing came from? If it was dominant, and if whatever is causing the phenotype to occur in this offspring and this offspring, if it came from the parents, which means the parents had that copy, and if they had that copy and if that was dominant, then they should have showed the phenotype too. Isn't it? You know? Yeah. So if the parents, to begin with, the first generation shows nothing and something crops up in the second generation, that's your simple logic and save your time there. Call it recessive right away. Yes? Make sense? Yes. Because they are showing you the picture from interval halfway on. If you would have gone above this pedigree. So in the zeroth generation, let's say, let, if I make a zeroth generation here, in the zeroth generation, there would have been the same phenotype. So the zeroth showed, that's why this skipped in between, and then again it crop show, showed up. So they started the phenotype exactly from where it skipped. So always think of it like that. This is skipping generation classic. Example. Is it clear, Hiram? Yes, sir. Yeah. And otherwise, if you call it dominant, you understand now why it doesn't make sense, right? Because if it is dominant, only one copy is enough to cause phenotype. And if that one copy is present in the offsprings, it must have come from the parents. Correct? 
for a dominant trait you cannot be a carrier can you no parent can be a carrier for a dominant trait one copy done just like capital t small t one single yeah. copy yeah. and you are tall you can't be a carrier for dominant so this is for sure recessive and not dominant is this trait sex linked or autosomal autosomal now if we know it's recessive the moment you know it's recessive you know that males can never be a carrier correct so male can just show it with just one x so if it was sex linked then it was parent male should also be accepted yeah ah, yeah so if it was recessive and sex linked then it will make sense here so this one could be one with affected and one normal but here it has to be affected because it just have one x it has to be affected so that this daughter can get affected because it's recessive it it needs both the copies right to be affected so that's why right in the first generation you will get to know it is not sex linked because this is not show playing up this is not happening make sense viram yeah so this is clearly and this is fairly short question it is autosomal so it is autosomal recessive one and two done give the genotypes of the parents in generation 1 which is these two and of their third and fourth child in generation 2 which means how many total kids they had 1 2 3 4 so of this and this so let's call them a parent is oh uh, my bad parent sorry digital things parent is a and b and c and d these genotypes can you tell me the genotypes if it is autosomal and recessive if it is autosomal you can just denote it by anything line a r anything you don't have to write it as x so if it is autosomal recessive both the parents here are carriers make sense or not a is also a carrier and b is also a carrier okay so a could be capital p small p or this also could be capital p and small p in that way both are carriers and this will be small p small p sorry i should write like small like this and this son is also small p small p i'm using p to denote this gene you can use any other thing you have to just mention write it right let's let the allele be denoted by letter this letter c p d or just by a line normal is normal trait and mutated is this anything you can you can decide mostly use letters okay iram and aisha yeah so c is also done perfect so now i think you must have got a hang of it and you're getting fast also so let's go to some lightning fast speed now one last quick yeah okay so let me let me give you one last <clears throat> okay let's see some foreign cbsc papers there is one in the foreign category
Can you read this question well and clearly? Okay, start. Raise your hands when you're done. Try to be correct and fast both. And this time I'll not explain. This time you will explain, okay? We're done. Okay, perfect. Cool. So let's start. Can you lower your hands, people? Study the pedigree chart given below showing the inheritance pattern of a human trait and answer the question that follows. Now, if 
the, the same word human trait they can put in front of any pedigree for any disease and it, it will become a little more ambiguous. But I think you know this one. So give the genotype of the parent shown in generation one, okay? And of the son and daughter shown in generation two. So first the parents have two, two offsprings, elder daughter and younger son. Then they ask, is the trait sex linked or autosomal? Justify your answer. Okay, clearly it's five marker question. Okay, so let me start. Okay, Iram, tell me. A. Um, for the for, before start. we go for answers, you tell me what do you think? This is a dominant or recessive? Recessive. Perfect. How do you know that? Needless to ask. But if it was I mean, dominant, it, yeah, it would express in the parent generation. Yeah, this must have come from some of the parents, and then the parent having just single copy could have expressed it. Yeah. So it's recessive. Perfect. Now, is it sex linked or autosomal? It's autosomal. It's autosomal. Why? Uh, because the sex linked trait has to appear in the. If it has to appear in the daughter, it should be both male and female, right? Uh, so you're saying it's recessive and for daughter to be recessive, she must be X defected, X defected. And in that case, the mother can just go on being a carrier and not show, but the father should have shown, right? This is what you mean. Yeah. So this is not happening. That's why you are saying that it is a autosomal yeah. correct perfect so both your reasonings are perfect and fast so it's a autosomal recessive disorder now give me answer a uh, for the father it would be capital p small p mm -hmm. for the mother it's capital p small p mm -hmm. And their children, so the the female one, it's uh, small p, small p. Mm -hmm. And male, it is capital P, small p. Why can't male be capital P, capital P? Then he's affected. That should be shaded, right? No, this is a recessive. So only small p, small p will be affecting. That's what you said, right? It's a recessive trait. Those who are blackened are showing a recessive trait. So I'm asking why it can't be capital P, capital P, both dominant copies. This is possible, no? You know, capital P is dominant. It will not, it, so dom, it is not a, it's a different allele. Because look at the child, ah, the female. Now you're talking. Now you're talking business, right? Yeah. Exactly. So the answer is, it cannot be capital P, capital P, because in that case, it will always rescue this child. So this child is black because this female, oh, sorry. He must also be small p, small p, correct? So one small p has to come from the father. It's autosomal. And one from the mother. Correct? And therefore, in this case, we also know that the mother is also capital P, small p. Correct? That's why though these two small p's came. Yep. Yeah? Yes or no? Yes, sir. And since we are doing this, let's do it for this one also. So this son, what it could be? Though they have not asked it, but tell me. So for the daughter, we have figured out anyway. Uh, oh, not all. So A is done. Uh -oh. A is done. B is not done. For this daughter, what do you think this daughter should be? To know this, what this 
father, the father of the daughter, what this father has to be. Now, this father has a flexibility. It can be capital P, capital P, or capital P, P small P. P. In that case, this daughter could be capital P, capital P, or capital P, no, small P. No, no, no. The father could be anything, but the daughter. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, capital B, small p. Mostly. Exactly. You're not paying attention to details yet. You're being fast, but you're missing things. Don't do that. So we found for everyone. Let's found for this also. Why to leave this poor soul? What do you think this brother would be? Capital P, capital P, or capital P, small p. Exactly. Perfect, right? And see, in the second question, they're asking, give the genotype of daughters shown in generation three. So in generation three, there are two daughters, this and this. So you have to give the genotype for both. If you don't do that, you will lose marks. See, is the trait sex linked or autosomal justifier answer? So you have already justified the answer to me. Okay. Which is fine. Perfect. Okay. So we, we did pick up some pace on pedigrees. Now, I would like to move away from pedigree and go back to this chapter and ask you if you have any issue anywhere in inheritance chapter. Because we have, I think, eight minutes left. So let's use it to go through any issues of yours, apart from pedigree. Kiram or Aisha? So in the next class, I'll be going, I'll be taking more questions. So it's not just pedigree in this chapter. Even from Mendel's crosses, the monohybrid and dihybrid cross. Would you like to do a question on the cross? Let's do a question on cross also. Okay. From the previous year's paper. Is there, uh, Okay, okay. Something like this. This is a five marker question. If you understand the language, it's very simple. All India. But if you get confused with the language, then it becomes difficult. Yeah. Iram, can you read this question for me? Just let me make it bigger. Yeah. Can you read this question, please? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Uh, give a genetic uh, explanation for the following cross. When a tall T plant, when a tall pea plant uh, with round seeds was crossed with a dwarf pea plant with wrinkled seeds, then all the individual of F1 populations were tall with round seeds. However, selfing among F1 population led to a 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 is to phenotype ratio. Phenotype ratio. Basically, it is a word statement of dihybrid cross that Mendel did. Yes or no? This question is one of the simplest question that they can ask. Uh, and you can just get easy five marks. So you understand what they're asking you? You have to just give a genetic explanation, which means you just have to make a dihybrid cross, the Punnett square. So you will start with Tall pea plant with round seeds, which means 
कैपिटल टी कैपिटल टी कैपिटल आर कैपिटल आर क्रॉस्ड विद ड्वार्फ पी प्लांट विद रिंकल सीड्स स्मॉल टी स्मॉल टी स्मॉल आर स्मॉल आर एंड देन यू विल दे आर सेइंग हाउ डू आई नो दैट दिस इज द ओनली जीनोटाइप आई हैव टू स्टार्ट विद बिकॉज़ दे हैव गिवन मी द नेक्स्ट हिंट then all the individuals of f1 population were tall with round seeds because i know what's going to happen all will be capital t small t capital r small r right this is f1 classic mendel yes or no yes so you have to sh show this cross and how will you show it in a punnett square capital t capital r small t small r on both the sides and you will see all will be capital t capital t sorry my bad it's dihybrid so capital t capital e capital r small t small r and small t small r you will see that all will be capital t small t capital r small r we just have to show this when you show this you are showing that all the four offsprings in the first generation are capital t small t capital r small r and all will be tall and round hybrid tall and hybrid round next they are saying however selfing f1 population led to this so selfing means you have to cross this with itself another plant of the same genotype and when you will do this you will make the classic 4 by 4 grid right with total 16 offsprings you understood that so even without writing a sentence if you do this systematically so and you mention this as f1 this as parent and then this as f2 sorry not f2 this is selfing of f1 f1 selfing and then you show f2 that whole grid which i'm not making here but you understood right you know yes sir yeah and you will get the ratio 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 this will be the phenotypic ratio do you remember the genotypic ratio of this same cross yes sir One is to two is to one is to two is to four. So two is to one is to two is to one. Correct. Just make it and see. It is from your book only. It is the textbook question. No change. But read the question carefully. If they make any minor change, you will lose all the marks because once you do it wrong in the F one, for sure you are going to do it wrong in the F two. no rescue there so just pay some attention to mono hybrid and di hybrid crosses all the examples of exceptions from mendel's law and their crosses test cross back cross and this chapter and pedigree and then this chapter is done so in next session i'll be taking more questions from molecular basis of inheritance and evolution both and uh, uh, previous years questions okay yes sir cool so i'll see you in the next class then take care if you want to ask or discuss something 